God is good, isn't he? And last week we had looked at that we can have peace during a pandemic. And I think that a lot of times the peace comes from within our own heart. And things that we do, things that we've hidden right here within our heart. And I think that if we have a clean heart, it helps to bring peace into our life. This morning we're going to be looking into Psalms 51. And we're going to look at uh, today, create a clean heart. But Psalms 51 was written right after David was confronted by the prophet Nathan. And he says, David, he says, you are that man. He says, you're the one that committed a murder. And he says, you're the one that committed adultery. And see, David was trying to hide things within his own heart. So we're going to look at it today in Psalms 51, verses... Well, I'm going to start with verse 1, and we'll read all the way through. It says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from the iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. I don't know about you, but whenever I look at that, I'm thinking during this whole time that's going on, everybody is into uh, sanitizing our hands and all these other cool things. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be doing that, but nobody's telling us that we need to make sure that our heart itself is cleansed. And so today, if we could take a spiritual bubble bath and just examine our hearts, and I don't know about you, but within my own mind, I know things that I still struggle with. It's plain and simple. Each and every one of us know the things that we struggle with within our own life. And as we take a look at that, I'm reminded as to what it says in Romans chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. As it is written, none is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God. All turn inside together and they become worthless and no one does good no not even one and I run into people in my life they say Dave you know you lived a perfect life you know how can you have sin well the truth is that each and every one of us has things in our own heart in our own life that we know and sometimes we try to hide those things from others and during this time of self-isolation and things that pop up on the internet they pop up there, and I click, hi, do not ever let me see this stuff again. Why? Because the temptations are there. And I don't want to see that kind of trash that's coming out. So I click on it, hide this person, or hide their post, or, you know, don't let me see their things. And what I'm saying is each and every one of us have temptations that come into our life. And as we are self-isolated, sometimes the temptations become greater, especially with the availability of the Internet. And so we have to take a look in our own heart and we have to examine it and we say, God, what is in my heart? God, that is keeping me from a closer relationship with you. And so we take a look at that and we say, God, if there's anything in my life, Lord, let it become clean. And in 1 John chapter uh, 1, verses 8 through 10, it says, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all of our unrighteousness. So as we go to different places and as we are out doing these things, Phyllis and I, we got tired yesterday, and we said we just needed to get out and go for a drive. So we went 60 miles, actually 62.4 miles from our house. Uh, we went up to Ponderosa, and as I was driving down the road, I was able to wave to people. People! You know, I was uh, feeling like I'm able to socialize, and they were on the other side of the road. So we were trying to keep our distance. You know, I made sure I didn't run into them, and they made sure they didn't run into me. But here's the thing, as we were driving up there, we stopped and we got up to Ponderosa, and my plan was to come back to California Hot Springs, and I got all the way up there and it said road closed. Oh, what a bummer, because I really wasn't looking forward to going back the same way I came. I had just saw everything I wanted to see. 
But here's the thing. As we got there to Ponderosa, I said, well, let's stop at that little market right there and we'll go get a soda. Pretty good idea. Hey, so we got up there and they said, sir, you need to sanitize yourself before you go in the store. Okay. So you scrub down, you know, uh, and we walked in there and we got a soda. And then we turned around and left. There was a total of four people in the store. Myself, my wife, and two others. But what I'm saying is during this time, people are so concerned about washing their hands. But what about what's in our heart? What about what we are doing in here? And so I was thinking about that. And purify us from all unrighteousness. And it goes on, it says, If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar. And his word is not in us. See, the truth is that you and I each can find forgiveness in our own life, within our own heart, and we can make sure that our heart is clean. And we can make sure that everything that is within us, our thought process, and everything that comes into us is glorifying God. Last week I mentioned Job, and I told you that Job had lost everything. He lost his ten children, he lost all of his oxen, he lost all of his camels, all of his cattle, and all of his donkeys in just a matter of a few minutes. But what I didn't tell you last week, remember Paul Harvey, and now the rest of the story. So here's what happened in Job 19 and verse 25. Job says, For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at last he will stand upon the earth. Job says, regardless of what's going on, and why was he able to say that? Because of the purity of his heart. His friends had said, Job, why don't you curse God? What, Job, what's the point? His, his wife came to him and says, Job, you stupid idiot. Why don't you just curse this God that you serve? And he said, woman, shut up. I don't know if he used it quite like that. But he says, you don't know what you're talking about. And here's the good news. If you were to read the end of Job, what happens to Job? Ten more children, my wife would say. You have to realize they were adult children. And to start over at 50 with little babies and have ten more, there's not a chance in my life that my wife would be up for that. Plain and simple. But God restored his children and gave them back the ten children. And it says that there was no one in the land who had daughters as beautiful as Job. And so in this, because of the purity of Job's heart, because his heart was right with God, God not only blessed him with ten more children, some might say that would have been a curse. My kids are grown. My kids are on their own. But God restored everything that he had taken from him to the tune of two bold except for his children. So if he lost this many camels, he now had double the amount. Same thing with everything. God restored, and it's because of the purity of Job's heart. And see, there's truth is that you and I are going to get frustrated with things that are going on in our life. But we don't have to stay there. We can say, God, cleanse my heart. And we take a look at verse 4. Against you, and you only have I sinned, and have done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words, and blameless in your judgment. And in verse 5, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight the truth, the inward being. You teach me wisdom and the secret of the heart. And in verse 7, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Wow! 
Have you ever thought about that? Everything that you and I have can be taken away from us. And we can come to God and we can say, God, cleanse the innermost part of me. Give me a bubble bath. When I was a kid, man, I used to really enjoy a bubble bath. I would put so many bubbles in the bathtub that it just kind of overflowed. And then I would dive down in the tub, you know, and I would completely disappear in the bubbles. Any of you guys ever do that? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And I felt clean. Why? Because the bubbles, they were there. Mr. Bubbles. In the pink box that they used to have, you, you know, pour it in there. But we felt clean. And then it came to the point in my life that I really don't care to take a bath. I love taking a shower, don't get me wrong. Say, oh, no wonder why, you know, shuffle distance. No. But what I'm saying is, we come to a certain point that the bubble baths are no longer fun. Now, my mom, on the other hand, my mom hated taking a shower. My mom enjoyed soaking in the tub. She hated water in her face. But what I'm saying is each and every one of us comes to that point in our life that we need a spiritual bubble bath. And we have to say, God, with what's in me, Lord, cleanse me. Make me whole. In Romans chapter 4, verses 7 through 8, it says, Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sins the Lord will never count against them. Wow. So if I ask for forgiveness in my life and say, God, come in and cleanse me. Lord, give me a pure heart. Clean me up. Lord, take all this crud that's in my life and help me to be restored. He does it. J. Vernon McGee, in his commentary, he writes, Whoever uh, has had to do with something penicillin can't cure. Sin. See, penicillin can't cure sin. And he goes on, and he says, back in the Old Testament, hyssop was used for three purposes. First, when God took the children out of Israel, or took the children out of Egypt, the Israelites out of Israel, yeah, we'll get it right. He said, this is one thing you must do at Passover. You are to take the lamb, slay it, and take its blood in a basin. And out on the front door with branches of hyssop, apply the blood to the doorpost, and then the lint will go back inside. And the second thing J. Vernon McGee says is when God was giving instructions for cleansing of a leper, he told about the taking of the two birds. One was to be slain, and the live bird was to be taken with hyssop and dipped in the blood of the slain bird and to be set free. Wow. I don't know about you, but that reminds me that my sins are gone if I've asked for forgiveness. And they're gone as far as the east is from the west. J. Vernon McGee says, this portrays the death and the resurrection of Christ. But the application of it was the hyssop. See, when God cleanses my heart and he comes in and he gets rid of all that ugliness that is in my life, he makes me pure. Thirdly, J. Bernie McGee says, when the, pe the people of Israel were on the wilderness march and one of them sinned, they could not stop and build the tabernacle for sacrifice. Wow. You ever think about that? So as they were uh, traveling along, they still committed sin. But they couldn't stop and build the tabernacle and be able to go to the priest and say, I've sinned. So there was a provision that was made for them. 
So the provisions were made for purification of sin by killing a red heifer, burning it with hyssop added, gathering the ashes and taking them along the wilderness march. And when a man sinned, the ashes were put in the water. Then the hyssop was used to sprinkle on them. Wow. A covering of sins that are in my life. There's an old song, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. It's what cleanses me. It's what makes me whole again. And I'm so glad that I have the blood of Jesus in my life to cover me of my sins. But see, in 2 Chronicles 7, 14 and 15, it talks about, If my people who are called by my name and humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And in verse 15 it says, Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers that are made in this place. See, whenever I come to God and I say, God, I need forgiveness in my life because I am not perfect. I am not righteous because you say there is no righteous, no, not one. The only righteous one was His Son, Jesus Christ, and He's the one that died for you and I. But as I come and as I cleanse my heart, as I allow God to come in and to cleanse me and wash me and give me that spiritual bubble bath and clean me up, we used to make bubble bath hats and put on top of our head. And we thought we were really cool. But we did that, why? Because we felt clean. But in verse 9, it says, Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew the right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Wow. Wow. God, I need restoration in my life. See, we're all about taking care of the outside, making sure that our outward is all together. But what about what we do inside? Are we clean? Can we say, God, remember not my sins. God, forgive me. Create a new spirit within me. God, I need this. And see, what does that do that brings restoration? It brings love into my life. It creates being restored. Why? Because I'm restored with the creator of the universe. It creates love. And I'm kind of reminded of what it says in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. If this creates purity in my heart and it creates love, then it says, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices with truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And it's because of the purity of hearts. God, restore in me a love for humanity. God, restore me. God, help me. You know, Mike Warnke was a Christian comedian years and years ago, and he had made the comment that uh, when the rapture happened, he was going to grab two sinners, one in each hand. And he says, do you want to get saved or do you want me to let go? And I think that that still applies to us today. Man, we need to do what we can as a church. As the church, we need to be making sure that people are spiritually clean. We need to lo show them the way to Christ. It's still up to them to make the choice. 
But we continue on, and in verse 13 of Psalms 51, Then I will teach my transgressions your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing about your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in the sacrifice, I would give it to you. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices are of a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. And in verse 18, do good to Zion in your good pleasures. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. And then in verse 19, then will you delight in the right sacrifices and the burnt offerings. And with the burnt offerings, the bulls will be offered at the altar. See, when I give my life to Christ and I say, God, forgive me of the things that is within my heart. And I don't worry about the other person. Well, do you know what that person did to me? Make sure that I'm right. Make sure that you're right. Make sure that my relationship is right with God. And then it will restore broken relationships. What else does it do? It frees me from being held captive by sin. And see, the devil comes in and he says, Do you remember what you did on this date? Well, look, this is actually what you did. And the devil tries to put a guilt trip on us. And you say, hey, dude, Jesus died for me. And he's forgiven me. See, in Psalms 32, verses 1 through 5, it says, Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against him, whose spirit there is no deceit. When I keep silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy, and on me the strength was sap in the heat of the summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover my iniquity. And I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you will forgive me of the sin. Wow. That's what I want. During this time, we have a whole bunch of time to spend in prayer, to seek God's face. God, restore in me. God, cleanse my heart. Lord, when we get through this, Lord, help me to have the right spirit. God is the only one who can blot out our sins. In Isaiah 43 and verse 25, I, I am the one who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not Remember your sins. God, thank you that you choose not to remember my sins and the things that I've done. And see in Psalms 103, verses 8 through 12. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve. 
Man, what I deserve is death. I'm guilty as charged. And he goes on and says, So he treats us as we do not deserve, or he pays us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so he has removed our transgressions from sin. You notice it didn't say north to south, because that's a measurable distance. We have the North Pole, and we have the South Pole. If I'm at the North Pole, and I start walking, I'm headed south. If I'm at the South Pole, and I start walking, I'm headed north. But see, I can go from the east to the west, and it's an unmeasurable amount of distance. As long as I'm going true east, I'll never meet the West. As long as I'm going West, I'll never meet the East. Because I'll always be headed West. And that's how much God loves us. Because why? He chose to do that. The purity of the heart. He says, I want a clean heart. In Ephesians chapter 1, in verse 7, it says, in him we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins. I don't know about you, but I need God's forgiveness in my life each and every day. Dave, you're a sinner. Well, the truth is that all of us are. But I'm a sinner saved by grace. And I want God to purify my heart. See, there's been times in my life that I've thought bad about people. I told you that a time or two. Lord, I wish the air they would breathe would cease to exist around them. Wow. What does that really say about what's in my heart? How about I say, God, why don't you bless them? God, help them to have godly wisdom. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17, and 18. It's probably also one of my favorite scriptures. Because it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, and the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave the ministry of reconciliation. I need a spiritual bubble bath. God, I need that bubbles all over my life. Cleanse my heart. Lord, cleanse me and make me right with you. Maybe this morning, as you're in your living room, as you're out practicing social distancing, fishing, that's a good thing. We all need that. But what about us? Do we need a spiritual bubble bath this morning? Do we need cleanse? We're going to close in prayer. But I want you to think about the condition of your heart. Hopefully, we'll be back as a church soon. And yesterday, one of my relatives had sent me something on Facebook. A dad said that his son had died to COVID-19. But he said, it's not as you think it is. And he went in and told the story. Because of the isolation his 12-year-old son was in, committed suicide. See, the truth is that we live in a world that's hurting and our hearts are broken. And Christ is the only one that can give us a spiritual bubble bath and clean us up. Lord, I come to you this morning 
And Father, I need a spiritual bubble bath in my life. Lord, I know things, God, that you continue to work in my life. And Lord, you continue to clean me up. But Father, I come and I ask, Lord, that as a church, as a body of Christ, Lord, that you would clean us all up and draw us all closer to you. And Lord, we know that, God, that there's more people watching than come to church. And Lord, I don't know everybody that watches, but you do. And Lord, I know that people are hurting. They need a spiritual bubble bath. Lord, I ask that you bring healing to their heart. Lord, help them to look to you for peace. And Father, we ask that as they say, I need a spiritual bubble bath, it begins with, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Wash me with your blood. Come into my life and help me to live for you. And Lord, we know that if they even prayed that, watching in their living rooms or their computers, that that constitutes salvation. And they have a clean heart. Lord, we ask that you would just continue to be with us. Lord, love us and help us to love others. And Father, we just give you praise for that. In Jesus' name, amen.